Now joining us, Scott Lowe from IGN. Uh, we're going to do our little tech segment that we like to do with Scott. And uh, I understand that the uh, iPad has come out. Is that, is that, is that a big thing? Is that, yeah. Are people talking about that? <laughs> yeah, uh, it, is in out, it is out now, and it, it is, in fact, right here. Oh, look at yeah. that. So we, mm. uh, yeah, so the iPad has finally arrived after months and months of rumor speculation and uh, overall hype. And uh, yeah, this is it. This is uh, the 64 gigabyte Wi-Fi only model, which is only what's currently available. And then next, later in the month, it'll be uh, 3G, which basically uses cell phone signals so you can get internet wirelessly, truly wirelessly. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, uh, as you can see, it's got like an aluminum back. It's uh, you know, fairly sleek uh, you know, and, and thin. And uh, it has a glass screen. And uh, all right, so I, I mean, look. Let me start with the silly questions first. Uh, it looks like a giant iPhone. Is that is? Am I missing something, or is it in essence a giant iPhone? Well, in essence, no. But it, I, it looks can be deceiving. I, I will say that uh, we, you know, a lot of people had that reaction at first, and myself included. I was like, wow, this is a really big iPhone. But uh, there are a number of like really kind of, you know, kind of separating features. I mean, obviously the big screen, but you know what that enables it to do is really kind of what separates it from the iPhone and the iPod Touch. Like you get so much more viewing space, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you use it, it's it makes all the more difference. All right. So now at IGN, you guys reviewed it overall, right? Yeah, we. Uh, we and so, what did it get? It you know. Did it kick ass? Was it a schwang wang wang? What well, do we got? I, I've been using it pretty much nonstop since it came out. And, uh, you know, my thought was it's a very cool device to kind of enjoy everything that you already do on your computer. Browse the web, check your email, watch videos, uh, stream YouTube, watch the Young Turks. You so there you go. So, All right, now I mean to like this iPad. So, uh, yeah, you could do everything you could do with a computer except for it's a little faster, a little sleeker, a little more kind of user friendly. And, you know, in that regard, it makes it kind of like a non-essential device. I mean, you, if you've got your smartphone and your laptop, there's no real necessary need for this. But, I mean, it is a nice device to have it's, if you're, like, you're just sitting on your couch you want to, you know, browse the web. So, I mean, to that end, it's, it's a cool device in concept. But my biggest issue with it overall was that it was, it's too expensive. I mean, the, the entry-level price is $499, which is, you know, not expensive you know, considering, you know, all the features it has, but, you know, for you know, this, you know, current ep economic climate, it's a bit much to ask for somebody for a non-essential device like that, so. Now, if somebody was trying to choose between a laptop and this device, what would you tell them? Would you say, them def would you say to them, definitely go for the laptop, this falls short? Well, I, I guess the question is, would be their laptop be their primary computer or not? Because mm -hmm. one of the things is that, you know, you can't do everything you can do on a laptop on an iPad. It's, it's supposed to kind of bridge the gap between an iPhone and a laptop. So uh, if you need a laptop to do, like, emailing and stuff and take that uh, wherever you go, uh, you can do most of these things on the iPad, but it's not quite as efficient and, and fast and, well, in most cases, inexpensive as the, the full laptop. So how about, like, Word documents? I, I want to write... Uh, while, you know, I'm out or whatever. I mean, how's the typing? Is there Word documents? Can you do that? Yeah, absolutely. There's uh, an application that Apple's released that you can purchase, you know, mm -hmm. through the App Store. Uh, it's called Pages, which is actually a, a basically a scaled-down version for the iPad of their word processing software, m much like uh, Microsoft Office, Microsoft Word, that sort of thing. So you get a full word processor on it. And, you know, as for typing itself, you know, it kind of takes a little bit of a learning curve. You gotta, you know, get used to typing on a screen with no physical buttons, you know. You know, but after that, you know, you can get some pretty reasonable typing speed on it. I mean, not full speed, but close mm -hmm. enough. Okay, there were a lot of people complaining about the iPad, okay? And I'm going to list a couple of the complaints, and let me know if you ran into the same problems. A lot of people are complaining about charging the iPad. Either it takes too long, or you have to have it on to charge it. You can't charge it while it's off. Is that true? Uh, I have not experienced the, the specifically turning it off in order for it to charge, but I have noticed that you can't just simply charge it from your computer, which, mm -hmm. uh, you know... It, while inconvenient makes sense, you know, the, the, the thing about charging your iPhone or, or smartphone through your computer is that it's a relatively small device. It doesn't take a lot of energy, whereas the iPad itself is a much bigger, much more energy-consuming device, so ultimately your computer can't power it. So you have to have a physical plug, which, you know, again, is less than ideal, 
but it, it's not a deal breaker. At the yeah, I, I can live with that. How about if people are saying that there's weak Wi-Fi signals where their iPhone is getting a strong signal, which is kind of weird. Have you noticed that I or not? I noticed a curious Wi-Fi problem when I used it, but it wasn't actually that it couldn't get signals where my iPhone could. What I noticed that uh, is that it, the slightest orientation changes when you're in areas of like weak signal. Mm -hmm. Like if you don't have, if you're not like really close to where the source signal is coming from, if you tilt it the wrong way, you'll start to lose bars. And you know, that's a bit of a problem. But I'm not seeing like what a lot of people are complaining about. I, I kind of seem like it seems like a little bit more like isolated incidents. But uh, I got you know Wi-Fi anywhere I could get it on my iPhone. Well, you said that in the future this device will truly be able to uh, use Wi-Fi. What does that mean? Oh, uh, you mean 3G, the 3G model. So basically, uh, Apple is releasing the iPad in two tiers. This is the first uh, kind of like wave of it, which is exclusive to Wi-Fi. So you can access, you know, Wi-Fi networks in your home, mm -hmm. coffee shops, libraries, anywhere you there's like you know a Wi-Fi connection, you can access it there. But they're later this month they're coming out with a 3G model, which basically allows you to not only use Wi-Fi, but also uh, wireless like cell phone signals like to actually get internet anywhere you are, as long as you're not in the middle of the woods, of course. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, how about uh, other problems people are mentioning? Uh, crashing apps and that it's free. Some people saying freezing. That, that seems really bad if that's the case, but I don't know if you noticed that. Uh, I mean, I have encountered that a little bit, but that kind of varies by app because, you know, it, the iPad itself has a very set core functions, like you know, there's like web browsing, email check, you know, uh, uh, photos and videos and all that, and there's and there's like a few other extras. But you know, it really comes down to the App Store, which is all third-party developers, people other than Apple, developing things that you can do on it. So, in terms of like consistency, there, you know, there's 150,000 available apps for the iPhone, which can be used on the iPad, and there's a whole slew of native apps that are exclusive for the iPad, and each one of them, I guess, is, is really kind of at the whim of how well the developer tested it. You know, one of the things that interests me most about the iPad is the fact that you can read books on it, you can watch movies on it, and it's a very portable uh, way to do all that, right? But one of the apps that apparently has a lot of problems with the iPad is Netflix. So usually if you're watching Netflix on your iPad, it'll crash. At least that's what a lot of people are saying. I, have, I haven't experienced any crashes, but mm -hmm. I have found that it's very slow, like most Netflix apps. Like the Net Netflix has expanded well beyond simply DVDs to your doorstep. It, mm -hmm. you know, there's, it's on the Xbox 360, it's on the PlayStation 3, it's on you know, certain uh, other mobile devices. But uh, you know, what I found is, is that in all of those applications, it's very slow to start up. And, that is it's the same case with the iPad. It, it takes a while to, to really get going. All right, I have a conclusion. Uh, I think the iPad's in a little bit of trouble, okay? Because in the end, uh, Scott, I agree with your analysis. Because, look, I can live with the crashing apps because, as you say, there's 150,000 apps. Some of them are going to crash, especially in the beginning. The Wi-Fi signal, I think that's probably the biggest problem. Uh, I mean, if I'm having to go like this or whatever to try to get a signal, I'm not going to like that. But the real essence of it is, it's not a laptop, and if I can't write on it, you know, then it's purely a luxury item. And I don't have the money for a luxury item to read a little bit better on a, on a screen or to watch a movie a little bit better in a, you know, uh, maybe on a plane or something. I don't have 500 bucks for that. So, I mean, after the initial excitement of the tech guys, I'm not sure it's got a good market niche. Well, I think I think it definitely has an application that because once you use it, like one of the things I say in my reviews that you know, unfortunately, you know, the, the perception of it is it's just a big iPod or you know that it's uh, you know it's or in, or in Apple's case they say it's a magical revolutionary device. It's really neither of those things. Like they're mm -hmm. like the middle ground is really where you find the true answer of it, and it, and it has a lot of really kind of cool functions there that I think people miss unless you actually get to use it. And and I think once people start to use it, they'll see that. But I think the again the biggest thing standing in its way is the price. It, you know, mm -hmm. it, it will become less of a like perceived luxury item as the price comes down. I think you know the real sweet spot for this would be you know somewhere around three hundred dollars, four hundred dollars even. Like I think that would be the like a reasonable price for it that maybe people would feel a little more comfortable with. But you know, starting at five hundred dollars and going all the way up to like eight twenty nine, that's uh, that's pretty strong. All right, Scott Lowe from IGN filling us in. We appreciate it, Scott. Yeah, thank, thank you so you guys much. For having me. Now you know, Young Turks.